welcome back to See and Free Studio. So glad you're joining us today. This is the place where we come to figure out what makes us unique, special, and different. And I just want to remind everybody that this is not about the popularity of your alma mater, how much money you have in the bank, or how many social uh, likes you have on, on your social media. It's all about who you are, and everyone's got value and self-worth. And this show for me was my attempt to remind everybody of that. So I hope it's done that for you, for all of you viewers that join us every week. I really appreciate you, and I want you to know you are unique, special, and different. And with that, I want to welcome today's guest, Jake Levin. Jake is an experienced marketing leader with a passion for growing companies from the ground up. When in college, he started his first company, WantSomething.com. After the company folded, he parlayed that experience into becoming the first employee and head of marketing at GoPuff, a fast-growing e-commerce delivery service. In the four years as GoPuff's head of marketing, Jake helped scale the company to 50 U.S. markets and over $1 billion in evaluation. Jake left GoPuff to co-found Get A Car, and it's also an e-commerce business. It's a car retailer. There, he led the growth of the brand and company to becoming one of the leading disruptors in the industry. Passionate about scaling startups, he is now onto his next adventure as Chief Growth Officer at Lunar Solar Group, a fast-growing agency. Please welcome Jake. Hi there, Jake. Hey. Hi. How's it going? That's good. So tell us where you are in the world and what you're up to these days. So I'm currently in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the newly started as the chief growth officer at Lunar Solar Group. So I'm back and forth between here, New York, and Park City, Utah, actually. We have offices in New York and in Salt Lake City. So what is, tell people what Lunar Solar Group is, because I think I would think it was probably like an energy group. <laughs> so what is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, as, as, you, as you heard, I've, I've been in um, a few delivery e-commerce startups and I uh, really wanted to find a company that I was able to work across more companies like that and use my experience to help them grow. So I found Lunar Solar Group and they are, uh, they're a marketing agency that focuses on e-commerce, D2C, and specifically in the uh, CPG space. So a lot of consumer products, uh, They do we do work with other types of companies, but it's it's definitely focused in that realm. And it's just, um, you know, it's, it's a company that focuses on digital marketing, growth marketing, um, creative, as well as web. But pretty much the goal of the the agency is to be able to take an e-commerce brand and scale it up from either day one uh, to you know some of the companies we've worked with. We've been with them from day one, and now they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. But also on the flip side, uh, some of the bigger companies out there that want to uh, you know come on to uh, you know the e-commerce trend that's going on in the last five, 10 years. Uh, some of these big CPG brands that you would see in a, a retail store, they wanna start selling online too. So we've been able to work with them to develop their websites, their marketing plans, and then uh, scale them up on the e-commerce side. So it's been uh, definitely a, a really fun experience to apply some of the knowledge I had on the brand sides with the companies that I've been a part of to uh, you know, just a whole lot of companies uh, in various industries. Yes, and you and I, we've gotten to know each other really well over the last several months. So I know a lot about you and I know how passionate you are about helping companies grow. And, um, you know, I'm really curious uh, what you can share with people about what makes you tick? Like what makes somebody want to go in and help all of these organizations grow um, for a living? I, you know, there's got to be something in there that's fueling you. Yeah, uh, so I think it's definitely one. I, I'm incredibly competitive, which I think is a blessing and a curse. You know, I uh, I, I think that in my career, um, I haven't been able to help but truly sink my blood, sweat, and tears and passion uh, into the companies that I'm a part of. So, uh, what ends up happening is that I just get obsessed over the results, and I think that uh, it definitely helps with being able to put in the work and the effort to be able to help grow the companies. Uh, but it also, you know, on the flip side is, uh, you know, it can be all encompassing too. So, you know, 
compulsively checking results on on the dish, different dashboards and things like that. Um, I think that this role is you know has been great for me because again you can really apply that competitiveness across a lot of different companies and just a lot of the different um, a lot of the different verticals that we do. But I, I think what what really makes me tick is that I, I also um, I. I'm, I'm hard to satisfy. So there's always this just need and urge to continue moving forward and kind of in, insatiable thirst to kind of continue growing. So I always like to say, I like to be, um, you know, sort of on the, the inflection of growth in, in a company. I want to kind of be part of their, their really big step up, whether it be from the beginning to the, to the next step or going into a company that's you know, has gotten started, but needs kind of uh, fuel to get to to the next tier. So just being able to level up a company. That's great. So where does that come from? So I mean, there's two things right there, right? Like there's competition. You you know, you like to compete. You like to win. Sounds like. And then there's also the fact that you like to keep going, like to push for growth and and push probably beyond what people think are their limits or potential. Where does that come from? Is that deep rooted? Is it something you picked up as a kid? <laughs> Where does it come from? <laughs> uh, I've, I feel like I've always had a, a chip on my shoulder. I, I, I don't know exactly where it comes from per se. It's, it's some, I think some of it's just, you know, in there somewhere genetically, but um, I even, it's funny. I even tell uh, my, my family, that when when good things do happen or uh, you know accomplishments are had to not you know to not brag about me or s say anything positive because it I, I like to kind of keep the tenacity and um, be able to continue to uh, to try to get something new something different and and push forward and continue to try to improve so um, I mean I, I just think that I I have this I guess anxiety behind feeling um, stagnant so it's really just comes down to like, I feel uncomfortable if I'm not uh, doing something to, to grow or push forward. So it's, it's um, like I said, it's something that's exciting, but it also can be a little bit tormenting too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Cause we don't always talk about that on this show. And I know you well enough to know that I know you'll, you'll talk about it. So, I mean, what is the flip side of, of that being, you know, the thing that fuels you? What is the, what's the torment? What, what, you know, what problems can it cause? Well, I think that, you, you know, and I've, I've watched a lot of videos of, of people I admire, whether they be musicians or business people. And I think that there is something in common that, um, you know, I, I remember watching an interview with a musician that I admired and they said when they were growing up, all they wanted to do was play for a room of 500 people and they'd be happy. And then they did that. And then they're like, all right, well, I want to play, uh, you know, a bigger arena, 2000 people, uh, and then so on and so forth until it got to stadiums and they were just, it never pleased them. So I think on, on one side, just that, that drip, that drive that you, you kind of need in order to continue growing as a person, and as a professional, uh, can also be a curse because, uh, if you're never going to be satisfied with where you are, uh, then what you, you can end up feeling constantly um like there's something missing and that, that that you're not accomplishing what you want to accomplish so i think that's sort of the flip side is that it can be um in in your mind it can be a little bit uh you know anxiety provoking or uh you know sort of tormenting to continue to want to push and, and not be satisfied with what you current where you currently are yeah, yeah, it's like that perpetual dissatisfaction can wear you down after a while, and um, and you have to just remember <laughs> <laughs> that like it is it is for good, right? Like at the end of the day, it in some sick way it pushes you, it pushes you to be better, it pushes you to try new things and take on challenges, but it can it can also be quite wearing. But, but let's talk about okay, so let's talk about it when it's when it's doing its job. I mean, what's your proudest moment? That that thing that you just kept pushing yourself to do. Um, um, and achieve that you're really, really proud of. Yeah, uh, I mean, does it have to be one? I can. No, can I, I'll <laughs> take them all. <laughs> I, I, well, I mean, I definitely am. Um, just because of, uh, you know, it was where I really started my career and was able to gain a lot of the experience. It's kind of like the gift that get, keeps giving. But um, really, you know, joining GoPuff as as uh, you know, the original team before the company had really taken off and being able to 
go through that process of of helping them grow and then watching them continue grow to grow and and um you know all the amazing milestones they continue to hit feeling like i was part of that and contributed is definitely a huge um, proud moment and um that's something that i'll always look back on fondly all the time that i spent there and the successes and the failures but then also you know deciding to to go from there to starting a business from scratch uh, which has always been a goal of mine, uh, was also a huge accomplishment. So, so now uh, with what I'm doing, I think that it, I, I like to kind of keep it as as smaller wins and smaller goals. So, just being proud of helping this company launch a new platform or this company hit their revenue goals, uh, those are things. You know, they're they're smaller wins, but they they also feel just as good. Yeah, that's great. Has there been anybody in your life that you think is has really kind of helped you? nurture this part of yourself, um, somebody that you admire. You mentioned a musician, but um, beyond that even, um, somebody that really inspires you. Yeah, I mean, I think that in different facets uh, of my life, different different people, I mean, I think that, you know, my, my family unit, it's, you know, I'm lucky to have great support there and I've always admired, um, you know, both of my parents for what they've accomplished and uh, what they're able to what they were able to do, um, you know, watching them growing up, but then now kind of being in my career, uh, looking at it from that way. So I definitely admire them. Um, some of the people that I've gotten to work with over the years, I mean, in some, in the companies that I've been a part of have, um, you know, a lot of them were, uh, you know, the same, the same age as me, they're friends of mine growing up and just be able to, uh, learn from, from them, uh, you know, being contemporaries, but also, uh, looking up to them at the same time really kind of sparks that drive of what is possible. I mean, just uh, looking at, like I said, what um, you know, GoPuff and and Get a Car, those two companies have have um, had amazing success, and I I think that uh, it's something. Those the people that that I worked with there, I always admire uh, the, the leaders in those companies. So there's definitely a lot of people, and um, you know, you mentioned the musician uh, on the on the musician side. Uh, Jack White, who is the person I was referring to that that had that that interview, but he oh, the reason I specifically admire him is because um, he didn't stop at just being a musician. You know, he launched a studio. He has three different bands, and he always talks about not being able to ever be satisfied. And I, it always stuck with me. So you know, I think that he, he's just an admirable person in, in that realm too. So I'll, yeah. I gave you professional musician and family. <laughs> I'll take them. I'll take them. Well, um, yes, I think that one of Jack White's songs was the first one my kid learned to play on drums, if I remember correctly. So because he was White Stripes, right? White Stripes, yeah. There we go. See, well, and you're a musician. So like, how does music play a role in your life? Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, music something that early on in my life I wanted to pursue. I wanted to be a professional musician, I'll be a rock star, tour the country. And, um, you know, I think that as I sort of grew up and I played in bands, I, you know, I've always played guitar and, and sang. And, um, you know, once it got to the point where I was in college and deciding, hey, is that something that I really want to pursue or not? I decided consciously to uh, leave it as a passion and a hobby because I knew that if I made it into something more, then it would go into this perpetual, never being satisfied sort of um, vicious cycle. So I, I kind of always chose to keep it as something that was just uh, something that I love to do and some a, a way to kind of escape everything else and uh, just enjoy something. It's a kind of a stress reliever. It's a form of therapy. So. Um, you know, I'm happy I did that, but there, I find myself still at times, you know, I, I will release music or work on projects and there's just that fire sometimes that makes me want to go and pursue it. But I would never want to resent playing music or being a musician because I wasn't good enough or I, you know, didn't hit the goals I wanted to hit. So it's really just something that um, keeps me level and keeps me centered. Yeah. Which is nice. I think sometimes we take that stuff for granted, right? Like that it's not about the pursuit of perfection in those moments. It's about the pursuit of peace and just yeah. giving yourself some something um, to help you be good at everything else, right? And and just enjoy it. And um, I, I hope some people take to take that to note because um, 
especially with the pandemic and everybody being locked away, a lot of those pursuits of peace and happiness and, and just joy, I think some people feel like they have to miss out on those. And um, I'd love to encourage them to reconnect with them. You've been doing that recently with your music, right? You've been playing again and you've published some music too. Yeah, I was, uh, it was kind of, you know, the pandemic definitely impacted everyone's lives and in different ways. And, um, you know, just on that side before, before the pandemic, um, you know, between working, uh, you know, and, and then also playing music, I, I was, you know, we we're playing a lot of live shows with the, the band that I'm a part of. And then once everything shut down, that obviously, um, you know, was something that I wasn't able to do anymore. So I did take the first I guess a couple, I would say the first three or four months of when everything really shut down in 2020 to uh, record an album for myself, you know, with no, no help, just me in my apartment and, uh, you know, doing all of the, the parts, all the instruments and uh, just seeing, you know, if it's just me, what does it sound like? You know, is it a lot of times music doesn't sound great when it's just one person because there's no one to push you or uh, you know, diversify the sounds at all, but it was just a fun experience to be able to, to work on it and then pub and at least say I published it. So. Yeah. Well, and I've listened to it and I like it. So you and I need to f figure out a way to make sure I share it with everybody else when we publish this episode. So I'll make sure to get the information. Um, cause it's on Spotify, right? Yeah. yeah. I, you know, a plug never hurts. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, I, I, I'm about plugging you and plugging anyone that comes on the show. That's what, this, what I'm here to do. And um, so, yes, I'll definitely share that with, uh, with our viewers and our listeners. Um, Jake, there's a part of the show where I like to ask a random question and you get to choose between one and 25. Um, and that's the question you'll get. So what number would you like? Nine. Nine. All right. What is one shift that you'd like to see in the world and how will that make a big difference? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, and it, probably the number one thing right now is just more focus on climate change and the way that we live our lives and yeah. not just uh, the people and and organizations that are are rushing to make huge impacts, but just really the everyday things that we do and how to just learn to live in a world that's more sustainable. And it's already started. You know, I think in in a lot of cities they're banning plastic um, plastic bags, and just I think us as humans we need to kind of be forced into. Uh, change and it's not something that we all choose to do. So I would just like to see government and, uh, you know, you know, in the US, at least government to force us into more change so that we can do our best to try to reverse some of the, the damage that's already been done. Yeah, yeah, I think it's something that um, you're, you're right. Unfortunately, humans, <laughs> we do need to like oftentimes put in controls and guardrails and um, to get us to all kind of move in the same direction. But in this case, uh, we definitely have literally a burning platform. We're out here in California and things are on fire all around us. So uh, thanks for bringing attention to that. And, you know, on that note, uh, you did talk about the fact that many organizations are trying to make an impact here. And, and we like to highlight different organizations that we want to um, bring awareness to and even bring uh, financial support to. And you chose one. Um, it's Is it 350 or 350.org? Yeah, it's 350. 350. Will you tell us a little bit about it? 350.org is one of the, the larger organizations uh, that's trying to limit the usage of fossil fuels. And I think that renewable energy is really the biggest impact that we can make. I mean, on uh, you know a personal level, there's all things, there's things that we all can do, but um, really until uh, you know huge companies and you know larger organizations are able to switch to more sustainable energy i think it's going to be um you know difficult to get the results we want so this organization which the 350 is um stands for the three 350 parts per million which is the optimal amount of carbon dioxide in the in the in the air um so the idea is that uh, just trying to switch uh you know companies and organizations to more renewable energy and i've i've been to to countries uh, you know, lives in countries where they use mostly solar power, wind power, and it's possible. And it's just, it, it comes down to obviously costs, but it also comes down to uh, 
regulations and and things like that, which is what I just mentioned. And and really, that's how we're going to make a difference because uh, I always think about it, there are a lot of sources of energy that are completely renewable out there that we could be using. And uh, I think that we've been really stagnant and slow to adopt them, especially in this country. Yeah, well, I agree. And I think, you know, I appreciate you bringing attention to the organization. Um, at the end of every show, for those of you watching on YouTube, there's going to be a QR code. You can snap your camera right at the screen and go um, and donate directly to 350.org. If you're listening to us on any of our audio channels, just check it out. It's literally 350.org. Um, and let's try to help save the planet uh, that we all live on. Jake, so we talked about you are somebody that keeps going, strives. You have this insatiable hunger to, to grow and push yourself. What are you going to do next, my friend? Yeah, uh, well, I think that right now I'm, you know, I'm six months into my current role at this company, and there's a lot of a lot of goals that we want to hit. Um, but I, I, I think that you know, at this point, I really have um, spent a lot of time trying to learn more and grow as, as a professional, but I want to help mentor others. So uh, I've been really lucky to be able to work with the team uh, that, that I work with now. Who, uh, a lot of them are young and they want to, you know, they want to become better marketers, better professionals. So it's been really rewarding uh, just doing that and, and being able to help them learn and grow themselves. Uh, in terms of, of what's next, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I definitely want to succeed in the, the role I'm in, explore uh, sort of, you know, a, a new city too, because I I've always gone to New York, but never spent uh, you know a significant amount of time there. So that's exciting as well, um, you know. But in all facets of my life, to whatever extent I'm able to during, uh, you know, during COVID times, is you know continue to travel, continue to to play live music, and and have that as part of my life, and then obviously you know continue to um, to improve and grow as as a professional too, and. Uh, definitely on the leadership side and, and on the, the management side. Yeah, well, I'm excited to be a part of your journey and to see all of that growth that you push yourself towards. I've loved getting to know you. Um, you and I have become pretty close um, over the last several months, like I said, and um, I am very, very excited about your future. And I'm super glad you came on the show and did me a solid by coming on a Friday night in Philly when you could be out with your friends. Um, so I really <laughs> appreciate it. Of course, it's my pleasure. Well, Thanks Jake, yeah, of course. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, and listening to Jake's story. Please go out and donate to 350.org and make sure you subscribe to cnfreestudio.com. You can find us just about anywhere. Uh, we're always on YouTube if you want to watch uh, a video. And if you want to listen, you can catch us on every other audio channel. Thanks and come back.